Hey everyone, this is Greg with Science Studio. The holidays are approaching and that means so are Black Friday and Cyber Monday. We'll show you here how you can build yourself an Intel Skylake gaming PC for around $600, which seems to be the sweet spot for the average consumer. Typical Skylake builds here on YouTube feature either the 6600K or the 6700K, but these CPU prices lead to builds costing upwards of $800 to $1,000, and we here in the studio don't want to leave the budget-conscious consumers behind. The solution? Settling for a modest 2-core, 4-thread CPU, the Intel i3-6100. Stay tuned for a future video featuring this build. So as we've just highlighted, the Intel Core i3-6100 is a dual-core, hyper-threaded processor from the new Skylake lineup, and while this one in particular isn't a fancy quad, hexa, or octa-core CPU, its 3.7GHz dual-core architecture certainly holds its own, especially when you consider its price. We found the lowest offer yet on SuperBuys, is it SuperBuys, SuperBiz, I don't know, for $123.99, which is actually only a few dollars more than the Haswell equivalent i3 processor, the i3-4160. The hyper-threading advantages on the 6100 mimic to an extent a 4-core processor and should allow us to run games efficiently and without severe or really even moderate bottlenecks. We'll need a motherboard to house our CPU, and in this case, we'll specifically need a socket LGA1151 board. There are several options to choose from, and we opted for the ASRock Z170 Pro 4 board, due to its upgradability and, admittedly, its fancy design. The Z170 chipset allows for overclocking, which can't be utilized with our i3, but could certainly be taken advantage of with an upgraded K CPU, such as the 6600K or the 6700K. The board comes in a variety of variants, including ASRock's Fatality Edition, which packs an extra DDR4 boost and built-in Wi-Fi. Regardless of your decision between the two, these Pro 4 boards certainly hold their own, and at a price of just $117.99, this LGA Socket 1151 motherboard will not steer you in the wrong direction. The next piece to our puzzle is RAM. Now since DDR4 is available and supported by our ASRock board, we'll be seizing the opportunity here. I scavenged Newegg and Amazon for quite a bit in search of you know, relatively cheap, reasonably fast DDR4 DIMMs, and miraculously came across these bad boys, Panram Ninja 5 Sticks. They come in a pack of two 4GB variants, allowing for dual channeling, and also boast a hefty 2666MHz memory clock speed, which should give us a few extra FPS in CPU-intensive games. GTA 5 comes to mind. The graphics card choice is entirely up to you. What I like to do is purchase everything else first, and then splurge with my remaining budget on the best graphics card I can afford. I opted for an Asus Strix R7 374GB variant, not only for its quiet nature and adamant standards of reliability, but also for the potential to crossfire this card with another one in the future. If you watched our review video of this particular card, you know that its fans don't even turn on until temps reach around 60 degrees Celsius, and the 4GB of VRAM is more than enough for running almost any game at high quality in 1080p resolution. If you want a bit more horsepower but don't mind cutting back on the VRAM, snatch up an R9 380 or a GTX 960 for around the same price. Deals are fastly approaching. You can get some of these cards for quite a steal. We have the R9 380 2GB XFX variant featured in our latest build here. Next comes storage. I'm not particularly a storage hog kind of guy, so 240GB of solid state storage will be plenty for my extraneous files and few games on Steam. I, I really only play GTA 5, and I, that's a huge game at 62GB or something like that, but that's really the only game I ever have installed on my storage device. So if you're a guy who's more concerned about storage, or maybe a girl who likes to play uh, multiple games at the same time, then uh, go ahead and snatch up a Seagate one terabyte hard drive for around $40. Keep in mind, however, that boot times and file loading times jump up significantly when you decide to forego the SSD. 
I like to choose my case and power supply last. The reason I choose the PSU last is because I like to get an idea of how much power my computer is going to draw under idle and full loads. I then multiply the load wattage summation by a factor of about 1.5, basically a safety factor, and then select the power supply based on this calculated value. In the case of this build, 500 watts is more than enough, and even leaves the possibility of adding a second card with a bit of room to spare. We do, however, recommend purchasing a modular, crossfire, or SLI configured power supply if you plan on utilizing two GPUs right away. This power supply has cables plenty long enough to reach our terminals in the case we've chosen, which is, in a segue of sorts, the NZXT S340. So Superbuys is currently running their S340s for sixty three ninety nine, which is the lowest I've ever seen this case sell for. For reference, I actually purchased mine for around $75, plus shipping and handling. An NZXT case for this price is phenomenal, and features were not compromised for such a budget sticker price. NZXT provides two stock fans, two dust filters, a large side window, and minimalistic aesthetics with plenty of room for future expandability. Linus Sebastian and many other popular channels on YouTube have covered this case simply due to its amazing appeal and stellar price. Of course, however, the S340 is one of many cases you can pick up for a competitive price. Just make sure that what you purchase will fit all of the parts accordingly. It would be a shame to, you know, have to have all your parts ready to go, only to find out that your motherboard, power supply, what have you, won't fit. Our latest build features the NZXT, the white windowed edition, and we have been more than satisfied with the looks as well as the temperatures that we're getting under load. Add a few LEDs, prop it up on a desk, and watch as your computer tower turns into a valuable piece of eye candy and furniture. So that's it folks, our grand total as of November 19th, 2015 comes out to just over 620 bucks, not including shipping, though most of these items can be shipped free of charge. The case is really the only exception that immediately comes to mind. Oh, and one other thing, don't doubt this little Skylake i3. This thing is the little engine that could. Just check out some of these benchmarks uploaded by Hardware Unboxed. Their channel link is in the description if you're interested. We greatly appreciate your interest in this video and we look forward to building it, actually, very soon. If you haven't already, be sure to leave us a like or a dislike depending on whether you thought we did a great or terrible job, and be sure to subscribe for more from our channel. This is Science Studio, thanks for learning with us.